Your Highness, thank you so much for joining CNBC. I really appreciate it. Um, just walk us through, to begin with, what this rapprochement really means. Uh, well, thank you. It's good to be with you today. Uh, a very historic day uh, here in al -Ula, where we were able to reach the al -Ula Declaration, which puts behind us uh, a dispute between uh, uh, us and uh, uh, you know, among the uh, four countries and Qatar that uh, uh, will, I think, uh, be an ex a very, very strong basis uh, for going forward for regional stability, for contributing to regional stability and uh, helping our countries uh, uh, prosperity and uh, uh, security together. Uh, Saudi Arabia's Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman has really framed this as the need to unite all the Gulf Arab countries. Um, when it comes to the threat from Iran. But for the last three years, Saudi Arabia and others have accused Qatar of being too close to Iran. They've said that they are supporting terrorism. Has Qatar seen the error of its ways? Uh, this agreement is not about Iran or about anyone else. It's about bringing our countries together and making sure that we work together uh, to deliver prosperity and security for our people. And we are confident that we are in a place that will deliver that. Uh, and uh, that the leaderships of uh, all the countries will be working very hard to make sure that we are coordinating our regional policies and our efforts to uh, contribute to the safety, security, and stability of the region. When you think about what's been happening over the last year or so, um, with the Abraham Accords, for example, that was seen as a big win, not just for the region, but also for Jared Kushner and President Trump. Does this agreement rack up for a win for the Trump White House? I think this agreement racks up a win for the region, first of all, uh, a win for all of us. And uh, absolutely, President Trump and uh, uh, Jared Kushner contributed to reaching this agreement in, uh, in working very closely with uh, Kuwait, who has been uh, working on this hub for some time. So uh, we are very appreciative of the support and efforts uh, that the Trump administration uh, has given for us to reach this agreement. Now, Cynic would say it took a heck of a long time to get everybody back on the same page. And the fact that this comes just a few weeks before the inauguration of President-elect Biden, a man who was pretty harsh in his rhetoric on the campaign trail regarding Saudi Arabia, is this a way to get back in the good graces of Washington ahead of the next four years? This isn't about Washington. It's about uh, the region and the priorities that our countries have. Uh, and our region, our leaders uh, saw that uh, they uh, that uh, the interest of our people was in resolving this dispute, and we were able to come to a resolution finally that was satisfactory to all of the countries that addressed uh, our concerns and that uh, satisfied uh, 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 all the parties and makes uh, certain that we have now a basis for much stronger GCC cooperation and much stronger uh, uh, efforts, not just, uh, by the way, uh, regional security-wise, but also in the economic integration field. What about those 13 demands? Saudi Arabia, among others, was pretty keen to get Al Jazeera off the air for quite some time. The idea that Qatar was supporting terrorism. What happened to those 13 demands? Because it doesn't look as if those had been met by Qatar. What's important is that we've reached an agreement that's satisfactory to all. We believe very strongly that uh, the al ula Declaration resolves all of the outstanding issues and concerns that uh, uh, the countries uh, party to it have had, and that it uh, lays the basis for now a very strong cooperative uh, uh, agenda for the, uh, for the GCC and also for the region, because of course Egypt was also a party to this agreement, which is something that uh, is uh, very important uh, to keep in mind. And in terms of this agreement itself, I mean, you've said that this doesn't have anything to do with the temperature in Washington, but at the same time, you know, this is coming just a few weeks before we have a new administration, one that has said they want to uh, bring Iran um, back to the West in terms of the nuclear accords, potentially. It's difficult to see how this isn't, frankly, a move by the GCC countries to realign themselves as Iran could potentially be opening up. It's certainly a move for the GCC countries to realign themselves. As I mentioned, this has been a priority since the beginning, and I think we have achieved that now. Uh, it will contribute to regional security. Uh, it will contribute, uh, uh, obviously, to a joint approach uh, to regional security concerns, and that can only benefit uh, uh, the region as a whole. And I'm sure that uh, we will engage positively with the Biden administration as the GCC and uh, work together uh, to further the region's uh, stability and security.
But it does seem as if you're more worried about Iran today than you were three years ago when this blockade started. We are as worried about Iran as we were then. We are continue to be concerned, of course, about Iran's uh, nuclear pro program, which we see now uh, ramping up uh, significantly and very dangerously. Uh, but as we've always mentioned, we've always uh, we've all, we are continue to be concerned about Iran's ballistic missile program and its uh, uh, regional activities, uh, funding terrorism, funding militia groups, all of that. And uh, we are confident that having a unified GCC uh, it will contribute to us being able to tackle those challenges. The last time we spoke, which was about a month and a half ago, we were discussing the need for Saudi Arabia and other Gulf countries uh, to be at the table if uh, Washington seeks that rapprochement with Tehran. Is that still something that's on the table? And have you had communications with the Biden team about making that a reality? We are, of course, very interested that uh, the, region, the countries in the region's voice be heard uh, in anything that concerns regional security. And we will continue to make that argument very strongly. So in closing, this is an agreement that makes the region safer. I believe so. Your Excellency, one quick one before I let you go. The seizure of a South Korean tanker um, just about 24 hours ago caused a great deal of concern. We didn't see that much of a change in the price of oil, but that could lead, as we saw back in 2019, uh, to a potentially more attacks on tankers, more seizures of tankers, and all of that, of course, culminating in that massive attack on Aramco facilities. Um, how would you characterize the level of tension right now in the Persian Gulf? I would say the, te the tension is there. Obviously, these kinds of activities, seizing uh, civilian vessels in international waters, all of that uh, only increases uh, tension unnecessarily. Uh, therefore, I think it's important, as I said, that we address these issues. We address the source of this tension, which is Iran's activity in the region. We hope uh, that the Iranians will uh, see uh, the benefits of focusing on their own interests, focusing on uh, developing their own uh, national uh, economy, on delivering prosperity to their people, rather than trying to continue to uh, further their regional ambitions and uh, taking an unnecessary provocative activity like this seizure of this tanker. Would you be willing to sit down with their foreign minister, your counterpart? Uh, we would always be open to talks, but those talks would have to start on the basis of a change in attitude and change in behavior. Uh, if the Iranians are willing to uh, uh, address uh, uh, and admit that their activities in the region have been the main source of regional insecurity and instability and have contributed uh, uh, to uh, uh, un uh, uh, continuing violence in several states in the region, and if they are willing to uh, really significantly change their behavior and become a, a normal state rather than a, a revolution, rather than ideology, then I think that uh, everything is possible in the future. Your Excellency, thank you so much for joining CNBC. Thank you. Always happy to be with you.